Hi guys and welcome back. Exactly one year ago I introduced you to something new on this channel, controversial even, the world of outdoor grade switches. Yes, that's right. Some of you didn't appreciate that video even if I was 100% honest about it, but I hope I'll change your mind today by reviewing not one but two outdoor grade switches uh, made from scratch by Matrix Audio, so these are their SS1 and SS1 Pro that go for 1200 US dollars and 1700 US dollars respectively. Unfortunately, due to VAT and taxes, the prices are slightly higher in the European Union. A while ago, I didn't believe that I could improve my streaming setup by introducing an audio grade switch, but after testing seven of them in a span of a year and a half, some of them can make quite a major difference, and if you are streaming head, then this video is definitely for you. Stopping wireless interferences can be done only by using thick metallic cases, and that's exactly what we see on both of these units. I've used plenty of affordable switches made out of plastic in my early days of streaming, but these two look like beautiful pieces of hi-fi furniture. They certainly don't have that boring look and plasticky feel of regular Ethernet switches. Design-wise, the attention to detail is quite impressive. Matrix Audio even chose to provide a 12-volt input for the SS1, and this way an upgrade to a linear power supply is pretty straightforward. An Ethernet switch should never tire you down with a complicated layout, so just attach a power cord on the SS1 and it will power on. Uh, but we have an on-off uh, switch on the back found on the SS1 Pro. There you'll find two 100 megabytes ports, uh, which should be used exclusively to connect your wired streamers. And if you think about it, 100 megabytes should be more than enough for real-time DSD data streams, let alone for 32-bit PCME material. The next 3 to 6 ports on SS1 and 3 to 8 ports on SS1 Pro are your fast 2.5 gigabit ports to which the switches should be connected to the router. Last but not least, two isolated 10 gigabit SVP Plus ports allow you to install optical fiber or SVP modules. Matrix Audio also left a tiny clue for their future plans, leaving a 10 MHz BNC clock input on the SS1 Pro, while on the outside it seems that uh, the only difference between SS1 and SS1 Pro is that this one has 6 2.5 gigabit ports versus 8 ports on the SS1 Pro. On the inside, things are considerably more interesting. The biggest difference between SS1 and SS1 Pro is that we have a switching mode power supply on the SS1 and a custom all-core transformer on the Pro variant combined with high-speed diodes and nearly 10,000 microfarads of filtering capacitors. Up to six ultra-low noise voltage regulators provide clean power to the clocking system and to the mains control chip. A large passive heatsink was also used for the main control chip, ensuring a cool and noiseless operation. By comparison, the SS1 is equipped with a DC input, allowing you to connect an external linear power supply that can fully unleash its potential. When the DC input is connected, the internal AC power supply is disconnected automatically. Everyone knows that the clocking system is the bread and butter of digital audio, and that's basically the same with Ethernet switches. Inside the SS1 Pro, you can find a femtosecond clock and a high-precision ultra-low noise synthesizer, while the SS1 has a simplified clocking system and does not have a synthesizer. Last but not least, let's not forget everything you see was crafted by Matrix Audio team. We do not have a third-party switch with a nicer clocking system and power supply, nicely wrapped in a beautiful aluminum enclosure. And this is how you differentiate real engineering feats from copycats. Before telling you how both of these performed in my stereo setup, uh, first of all, I recommend checking out my article that I left below where I explain in depth how Ethernet works, how transmission speed and frequency works, I explained the I pattern diagram, and I also mentioned the full signal path. All of that info is incredibly important to realize why an Ethernet switch can make a major impact on your hi-fi streaming, but I didn't want to make this video too long or boring for the ones who already know all of this information. Moving on to sound impressions, 
First, I want to say that I love my Rockna Wave Dream Net to bits. Its feature set is crazy, but let's rewind for a moment and let's remember why I bought it in the first place. So first of all, it's a Rune core. It's a Rune server and a very good one at that. Secondly, it's a Rune endpoint uh, slash wired streamer. And again, a very good one at that because it has two linear power supplies and those are separated. Thirdly, it's a music server. I have a four terabytes SSD installed, so all of my offline music goes in there and I can listen to it via Rune. The fourth feature, it's a great sounding CD player and I started collecting CDs again because it sounds really great as a CD player. And the last feature, it can work as a CD reaper, but you'll need an external optical drive for that to happen because the internal optical drive uh, is completely disconnected to everything. Uh, the one thing that uh, it doesn't have, it doesn't have any kind of isolation on that Ethernet port, so that is just an Ethernet port nothing more and nothing less. More than a year and a half ago, I started toying around with Ethernet switches. Uh, I started with affordable ones, the ones that are costing less than 200 US dollars, plastic ones, and some of them, but not all of them, made a positive change, especially when I tried to uh, power them with linear power supplies. However, the moment I tried that Melco S100-2 and also the LHI audio switch 10, I completely changed all my preconceptions about Ethernet switches because my streaming setup was sounding considerably better. What I felt right from the start is that the background noise uh, went down and uh, all the musical notes were a little bit louder as if I turned the volume up. The smallest nuances were no longer hidden but lying in plain sight and I didn't need to focus to hear all of that goodness. I couldn't believe my ears, but I was hooked and uh, from that moment I tried additional Ethernet switches. I've been testing both of these switches for about a week now and the first one that I tried was SS1 and the first track that I tried was Alive by Ajit, Paya and Nessie Gomes. At the 0 minute and 35 second mark there is a very intricate bass line that is emerging from the background and that bass line with the SS1 installed, I felt that the tightness of the bass improved, like uh, the speakers are more in control of that bass line. And also what's interesting is that uh, there were additional layers somehow to that bass line. So the quality of the bass actually improved. Uh, the background noise went a little lower and uh, subsequently the sound became a little bit more transparent, like more nuances started to emerge from the background like I had a little bit more micro details happening in this room, which is actually pretty interesting. Uh, what struck me right from the start is that it was not messing around with the frequency response like some other switches that I tried in the past. So the bases are not going up and down in terms of quantity, only quality was improved. Uh, the mid-range was not sweeter or thinner sounding and also the trebles were not brighter or darker sounding like some other switches were doing. So it was not playing with that frequency response, mostly only with the quality that I was getting uh, from the bass, for example, from the treble, for example, and also getting a slightly tighter sound, slightly more in control sound of the speaker that I was listening to. The Radio TD 2.2 that you can see behind me uh, have an impressive set of skills and I'm yet to find their limits. Uh, Performance-wise, I believe that my setup is still not providing absolutely everything they can provide, uh, but I feel that I'm getting there. Uh, with the SS1, what was interesting is that they are providing this big canvas of sounds uh, that was coming from behind the wall, behind the TV that you can see behind me. And this effect is actually very important to me because usually if I'm not getting this effect, it means that uh, the units that I'm reviewing are doing something to the holography, soundstage, 3D effect, but luckily it was not messing with that. So I was again getting that big canvas of sounds. Uh, but what I've heard next with the SS1 Pro was actually quite a big difference. Swapping the SS1 with a bigger SS1 Pro Several things were put into motion, but uh, summarizing everything with just a few words, uh, that would be micro contrast and also dynamics. So if the bass was tighter and slightly of a higher quality on the SS1, on the top of the line switch, it was also 
more fun sounding. So uh, the basses went a little bit lower and the punches that I felt in the chest were a little bit stronger as well. The distance between the lowest intensity notes and also the highest intensity notes was a little bit bigger, uh, like I was listening to some higher dynamic range tracks. So I was of course listening to the same cobbles and to the same title, uh, but still the sound was a little bit more detailed. Uh, there was more micro contrast and since it was sounding a little bit fuller it added a solid feel to the whole affair like this is a trumpet made out of metal uh, this is a violin this is a piano everything felt a little bit more real via the ss1 pro the things that were supposed to be hidden were now occupying my listening space and everything became simply clearer and a higher transparency settled over my hi-fi system the backing vocals, for example, were now stronger in intensity and some minor movements in the auditorium were easier to spot. The final piece of the puzzle was getting a stronger sense of realism of this is how music is supposed to sound, getting emotionally attached uh, with my music via SS1 Pro versus the SS1. Out of all Ethernet switches I tried in the comfort of my home, there was one that completely removed the grain, the brightness, the digitals, the raw nature of streaming platforms. And even if I was listening to lossy audio formats, it made me feel that I'm listening to high resolution content. And that one was Ansu's Power Switch D3. And the funny thing when I'm comparing that one with the SS1 Pro, I get that feeling that uh, Matrix Audio tuned their unit, the SS1 Pro, in a very similar way. So this one is again lowering the noise floor, it's improving the resolution, detail retrieval. It made my music a little bit more fun sounding, so dynamics is clearly improved as well. And at the same time, it's not messing around with the frequency response. Quantity-wise, nothing goes up and down. So the superior power supply, clocking system, and the custom nature of the whole thing simply uplifted the performance of the music streaming to some higher grounds. When I moved to streaming platforms a while ago and ditched a substantial collection of offline music, I always felt that Tidal and Cobus were making my music flatter and interesting, dynamics were no longer fun, it was no longer connecting me with my music, and of course I needed to make some uh, substantial changes in my Haifa system until the music started to sing again the way I wanted. Uh, but with the SS1 Pro, I feel that the missing link is finally back into my system. I no longer need to tweak anything, to change some electronics, to change some cables, to, you know, get the power right. It just sounds good with the SS1 Pro. It just sounds real. It just sounds fun. And that is probably the most important part when you're listening to music, because you don't want to count how many things you can hear, how many things are playing in the background. You just want to have some fun times while listening to music. Strangely enough, cascading both of the switches, so going from one to the other and using them both can bring some benefits when listening to music in a hi-fi system, in a very good hi-fi system. So when going from the ASUS router to this one and following this one with the SS1, I can feel that the music is slightly clearer, is slightly more transparent, is more detailed sounding. It's like having double filters in a water tank and the water is simply clearer. It's the same thing. The difference is not massive because I do believe SS1 Pro already does a pretty good job, a very good job actually. And when combining them together, I think that I'm getting like a 5, maybe 7% improvement in terms of resolution, transparency, tightness. Uh, there was another small difference, and that was in terms of holography. The sound was simply uh, limitless in a way. It was no longer you know, bound to this room. It was slightly bigger sounding, slightly deeper sounding. Wrapping up, if you believe that all ducks sound the same, that all cables sound the same, that the power lines cannot impact the final performance of your system, and everything is a big worldwide conspiracy, then this video is definitely not for you. However, if you experienced a major impact a single component can make in your system, then I think you know everything there is to know about Hi-Fi. Once the noise enters your system via power lines, via USB cables, via Ethernet cables, then it becomes a much bigger pain 
when the sun doesn't shine. So solve your first issue until it becomes a much bigger problem. The inception point with offline music listening, that would be your digital transport, your source, but with streaming, that would be your router or your Ethernet switch. And I know it sounds crazy that an Ethernet switch can make a difference, but it does and quite a big one. There are several streamers that have some sort of Ethernet filtering, some brick lockers, some uh, noise suppression mechanics, but my Rockna Wave Dream Net has none of that, so in my case, an Ethernet switch can make a bigger difference. And considering that everything was made in-house by Matrix Audio and they make a substantial difference, they get my stamp of approval pretty easily. All right, guys, if you want to know more about these two switches, then I recommend checking out my written review that I left below. It contains on average about three times the information of that video. That's all for now. My name is Sando and I'll see you very, very soon. Cheers.